Hello everybody and welcome back to Provis Gaming and more Democracy 3 Africa playing as Zambia. I made a boo-boo. Uh, I was going to load the game for this, uh, well, my save game for this particular video and um, I accidentally hit the little X next to the save icon and I lost the game file. Because in Democracy 3 Africa, for some reason, when you're going to delete a save game, there's no, like, confirmation prompt. Are you sure you want to delete your only save game? Well... Didn't happen. Anyway, um, I did manage to play back to where we were before, so a couple of events may have changed, a couple small tweaks here and there, but for the most part, I think we are more or less on track. It does say that I have 16 points for some reason, which is not true. Uh, I should have less than that, but it, it's got that bug. I don't think they ever fixed the bug, where if you reload a saved game, um, sometimes the, uh, sometimes the, uh, political capital just comes to some random weird number and you can spend it. But once I hit next, it should reset to what it's supposed to be, so I'm not too worried about it. By the way, one more thing to address. Victoria Falls. Yep, that's the natural wonder, the seventh natural wonder of the world in Zambia. Uh, I am familiar with Victoria Falls, but I had no idea it was actually in Zambia, or at least along the border. So, uh, thank you guys for letting me know in the comments section. Thank you. It prompted me to go and uh, look at some pictures, and it was beautiful, and it made my day. All right, let's begin with year two. Armed robbery is now at an end. Wonderful. Crime has gone down significantly, and I credit the machine guns for that. We have put the fear of God into everybody. We also have oil wealth. Now, this is because of the special, uh, one of the special events I got in between my years. Um, we got the oil drilling opportunity, and I took it, and as a result, we got oil wealth, which increases our GDP, oil supply, but it upsets the environmentalists. All in all, we need all the help we can get, so I think that was a good choice. But now we have to deal with some recurring things, like, you know, children's food. So we'll regulate it to improve our health, but, uh, yeah, that's a thing. Still have 0% of the vote, though, which makes me kind of sad. All right, so crime is going down. What is the next thing that we need in order to build up a good modern economy? If crime is out of the way, then foreign investment is able to start thriving in a location. People feel safe. It's more stable. That's good. However, we also need good transportation and infrastructure. Right now, we have poor transport links, which is hurting everything. GDP, international trade, tourism, education, health, agricultural efficiency, blah, 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 blah. Nobody likes it. Yeah, that's a problem. We also have power blackouts, which again is hurting the GDP, health, education, Everyone's unhappy, and unemployment goes up because they can't do their job. So this is quite bad. This is really, really bad. We need to improve our infrastructure, and one of the best things that we can do for that is actually going into road building. Yep. If we go to road building here, we can actually spend a lot of money doing this. Uh, it'll get kind of expensive. A few hundred million more kwacha. And uh, in the process, we're going to be using cars a lot more. The environmentalists will be very unhappy. It's not good for the environment, but infrastructure goes way, way up. It's uh, fairly cost-effective, only 18 points and a few hundred million kwacha, and that's a lot of extra infrastructure, about eh, about 13% or so, which will make a pretty big difference. So yeah, we're going to go for the road building, and on top of that, we can also do toll roads. I almost missed that up. Toll roads. There we go. Toll roads. Toll roads basically are just charging people to use certain kinds of roads, like major highways. So, for example, when I'm driving from Paris to Normandy, I had to go through like six different tolls and it got kind of expensive. Seriously, I, I think I ended up paying like an extra like 20, 30 euros or something like that going to and from Normandy. It was kind of painful. I wasn't happy about it. But the thought on this is it's another way of raising money in order to fund the maintenance of your roads without having to raise taxes significantly more. And that way uh, you ensure that uh, rather than your tax dollars going to, you know, building some road on the other side of the country, you know, your money gets more targeted use where you're actually driving. So you feel like your money actually has some practical use into something that's relevant to your life. That said, toll roads aren't usually very popular because people don't like being charged. They would rather have people deducting more money out of their paycheck through taxes rather than have to pay the toll up front. It may be cheaper ultimately to just privatize all roads. Who even knows, really? It probably will never happen in the United States. But this will improve our infrastructure by another, uh, about, about 4%, actually, about 4%. Capitalists like it, car usage goes down, traffic congestion also goes down, and usually only the wealthy can afford to take the roads, so equality goes down a teensy-weensy bit. But it doesn't cost us much, in fact, it costs us nothing, we actually gain just a few million kwacha. It's practically negligible, but I'm sure we can reinvest it in some sort of, um, I don't know, child education program? Will that make you feel better about how we saved your money? Probably. I don't know. Toll roads um, is interesting. I, I'm actually kind of curious to get you guys' thoughts on this. So, 
I'm not a libertarian, all right? I'm a, I'm a classical liberal, but there are certain things where I deviate away from libertarians on, especially matters of the social contract and stuff like that. So I can't speak with absolute authority as far as libertarian perspectives. But my understanding is that there are a couple of different flavors of libertarianism, at least in the United States. The Libertarian Party has a couple of different factions primarily, one of them being the anarcho-capitalists. And uh, my understanding is most anar anarcho-capitalists would uh, say that there's no reason at all for the government to be involved in road building or infrastructure projects. The free market can handle that. The private market can do it. People will build roads because you can charge tolls and that's how they'll make money. It's a good business, right? Um, I don't know. Am I, am I correct in that? That's actually the belief. They also, for the record, believe that people shouldn't need driver's licenses. Which I would disagree with. I think you do need driver's licenses if you are going to be driving in public roads. The public, therefore, has a right to maintain certain level of requirements before you use our roads and put people in danger. However, if we went to an all-privatized system like they're suggesting, well, then, yeah, I guess the, the matter of, I don't know, certification in order to use those roads would be up to the individual owners. But I digress. Um, I'm curious to, certain to know, would you guys agree with that policy, though, with the anarcho-capitalists, or do you think that this is a legitimate role of government? I mean, I know that, I hate the idea of raising taxes for this as well, but there's one particular argument that I can think of, um, that actually flies in the face of the anarcho-capitalist perspective. Just off the top of my head, I'm not scripting any of this, but there's one thing I can think of off the top of my head that makes it a problem. So, if you turned over all highways to being built by private industries, um, so that they could charge tolls, okay, great, um... The only reason that would work, though, in a free market is if there are alternative methods of getting around in order for people to compete, right? Whether that be, um, uh, instead of just using the road, maybe you take a train. Or, maybe you have two different roads that are running parallel to each other, and you can just compete for business, and that keeps tolls low. I mean, that's, that's, that's the only reason that the free market works, is because competi competition, right? Well, what about the cases where uh, a second or a third, maybe even, highway running parallel... Uh, is not feasible. What about those those cases? You know, what if there isn't enough space? You can't have multiple highways competing with each other. You only have room for one, and what effectively happens is uh, a monopoly. On top of that, what about uh, what about urban planning and uh, so on and so forth? I mean, there's sometimes not enough space to have that many extra roads. So, how do you have free market competition in that case? I really would be interested to hear their argument. I'm not sure that everyone... I'm, I'm pretty sure most people who are listening to this would probably be on my side. Honestly, this isn't something I've given a ton of thought to, simply because there are significantly higher priorities for me right now in American politics. But uh, if you if you ag agree with the anarcho-capitalist argument, or if I'm misrepresenting it, I'd be very interested in hearing your perspective. Or even if you disagree with it and you have a different argument than what I provided, I'd be interested in hearing that as well. So let me know in the comments section. Uh, I would love to read that. All right, let's move on to turn two. Spent a little bit too long talking about that. Extreme nationalism is over. Better education has helped people from basically just being racist and xenophobic and stuff. So, hooray. Ban tobacco advertising? Um, okay. Uh, I think approving the ban would be good for our health, but it'll probably upset the capitalists. Still, uh, I'm going to approve the ban because health is more important than upset and then making the capitalists happy right now. I know that some of the stuff I'm doing is flying in the face of, um... Uh, the, the voter demographics I said that I'm going to be going for, but considering how bad this all is, I need to be willing to make some compromises to get us going. Anyway, all right, we do have a small surplus of only 140 million. It's not great, but it's something. Now, one thing that makes me sad is because I had to reload the game, I did not get the STD education program, so HIV and AIDS is not gone. Yeah, uh, which means I'm still spending a lot of money on health, but it's a little bit better now that I have family planning, it's just not great. Hopefully, we will get that event relatively soon. Okay, for turn two, uh, I think we should focus a bit on the economy. And what I'm going to do, of course, is go to rural development grants because I love these things. 27 political capital, but it's only 99 million kwacha. And by doing this, we will be boosting up the GDP. We'll make the rural people a lot happier. Equality goes up. Unemployment goes way down, 13%. That's amazing. Also, our agricultural efficiency, which I forget what this does... Uh, it says it does distort the free market, but they support rural businesses. Interestingly enough, capitalists don't seem to care at all. I've always thought that was a little bit bizarre, but eh, whatever. They like free money, it turns out. Okay, agricultural efficiency. What does that do? Uh, if I click on you... Okay, it's really low, and at the low states, the environment is worse. Rural are unhappy, poverty goes up, urbanization goes down. I suspect the argument for that is... 
Uh, inefficient farms result in inconsistent food transportation to cities, which means they are unable to grow as effectively as they otherwise would. Therefore, urbanization goes down. It's harmed because we have inefficient farms. I suspect. The environment, I don't know. I'm, maybe that has to do with uh, pollution from farm equipment. That could be. Let's see. As efficiency increases, fewer people will be employed by the agricultural sector, and there will be less stress on the environment for the same yield. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, all right. Well, I guess improving that will uh, help with poverty and unemployment and stuff, and um, improving it will actually be better for the environment, so it's a win-win across the board. As long as we don't have mass urbanization, which I generally find is inevitable in a wealthy country in Democracy 3 Africa. All right, what else do we want to do? Tourism? Eh, not right, not right now. We had a terrorist attack recently. I don't want to draw attention to that. How about a business startup campaign? Those are good. Very cheap. Socialism membership will go down by another 4.4%. I like it. Let's do it. Next turn. Uh, oh crap, one of my ministers is threatening to quit. He likes liberals and motorists, does he? Look, I just invested a ton of freaking money in roads. The motorists will be thrilled. You sit tight for a minute, Charles Malunga. Shut up. Airplane crashes. Crap. See, this is why I didn't invest in tourism. More people would have come here and probably died in the plane. An airplane owned by the National Carrier has crashed, killing all on board. Poor maintenance has been cited. I suspect a lot of this is because I have terrible infrastructure. So, yeah, that sucks. Um, mm, well, not much I can do about it right now, but, uh... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I'm working on it. It is slowly starting to tick down. It's going to take a while before the road building really kicks in. One other thing I could do is actually start building some railroads, but... I'm not sure I'm going to do that quite yet. All right, uh, 28. What was, um... What was unemployment? It was pretty bad, right? Unemployment. Where's unemployment? Ugh. I can't see it. Where's the sleeping man? Isn't there a man who's supposed to be sleepy? Hang on. GDP. Productivity. Unemployment. This guy. Okay. Unemployment is pretty high still. It doesn't look like we have made much effect yet with the World Development Grant. So we definitely should invest a bit more in reducing our unemployment. Because that is a major driver of our bad economy right now is not enough people are actually able to work or find jobs. So one thing that we can do, and this is a little bit controversial perhaps, but one thing we can do is actually pass compulsory work for the unemployed. Everyone getting uh, unemployment benefits now has to do some sort of work per week. That includes public beautification, collecting litter, and other tasks that do not risk other jobs. Nobody should expect... They haven't fixed the dang typo yet! Nobody should expect to leave off the state. I've mentioned that every time and nobody does anything about it. Gosh dang it. Maybe I should, uh, maybe I should message the creator of the game. Not that we're on a name, but, you know, not on a first names basis or anything, but I do have his email address and I've talked to him a couple times. All right, well, we are going to pass this. Now, one downside of this, of course, is it's going to make us seem very cold hearted because what we're going to do basically is say, hey, you want your unemployment check? Okay. If we're going to give you free money because you're not working to try and, you know, help you along, then we expect you guys to at least do a little bit something for us as well. Just go clean up the trash on the street or something like that, right? To me, that doesn't seem entirely unreasonable. If we're going to give people money, then one, uh, we want something out of it. So we feel like it's not just wasted money. At least we're getting something to help them justify, you know, getting their checks. So I feel like that's at least reasonable to say it in the first place. Secondly, it's actually a direct incentive for them to go and make sure that they go get a job as soon as they are able to so they don't have to go do this anymore. I don't want this, I mean, there, I think there are some people who, who will push for compulsory work because they think that it's a good humiliation for the poor. And we're not looking for like a debtor's prison kind of humiliation here. But I do think that encouraging people to get to work um, and at least giving them something to do with their time could also be a pretty good thing. I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts? Do you, do you disagree? I'm pretty sure we have something kind of like this in the United States. Maybe not quite to this extent, but... Uh, was it under Bill Clinton that we passed some level of entitlement reform and you have to prove that you're looking for a job uh, before you can get any before you can get any um, unemployment benefits? I don't know. I've never been unemployed, actually. Well, okay, I was obviously when I was a child, but I've been working since I was 15 years old. Um, and I've been able to keep a pretty steady job ever since then. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, either way, unemployment will go down by another 4.5%. We're not very compassionate, but the GDP will go up. Because we're making use of some of that labor that otherwise was going to waste. So that's not so bad. Unfortunately, we are out of political capital, so we have to move on to 
the fourth quarter. Debt protection law. Do we limit their agency or do we allow them to operate? We're going to allow them to operate because that's a good capitalist policy to have. Yeah, unemployment is definitely one of our uh, worst aspects right now. Health will definitely need to go up, but there's not much more I can do about the HIV and AIDS until we have an STD education program. Um, poverty is going down a little bit anyway. Education's on the rise. That's a good thing. We have a very, very minor deficit. We may want to consider passing a tax. What's a good tax? I have a thought. What about the automation tax? This actually might uh, kill two birds with one stone. So, I'm going to go into a little bit of economic theory here with you. Uh, just kind of bear with me for a second so you can understand why this works the way it does. So, uh, suppose that I own a business. Let's suppose that I own um, a, a fast food restaurant, okay? In order for me to make the product and sell the product, I need to hire some employees, right? I need labor. I need something to do the job because I'm I, I, as the business owner, can't possibly handle thousands of transactions a day. I need to have some employment, right? Um... And that's great, because labor is basically a commodity. I mean, I, it sounds horrible to dehumanize labor like this, but it is it is a commodity that has to be traded for, and it is uh, you have to be competitive over it. So, for example, if I'm an employer, my goal is to offer a high enough salary to attract certain, con uh, certain some employment. They might want to attract labor, because it's a scarce resource that needs to be competed over. But I don't want to pay so much that I don't make a good profit margin, right? And that's kind of where the balance comes in. And people who can offer really good benefits and salary typically get their fair... Um, what Whatever labor they want, but, you know, at the cost of lower profit margins, or perhaps they can find a way to make it worth it. I don't know. In the case of a fast food restaurant, if I own one hypothetically, though, the skill threshold in order to get into this job is relatively low. Almost anyone can do this job when trained, okay? So there's a very wide pool to pull from, and uh, as a result, wages are going to be pretty low because it's not specialized labor. Now, that's the idea. And I want to pay my I want to pay my uh, my, my w employees their wages. They do the job. If they're doing their job well, and I've got a good business, I make a profit, and it basically pays for the wages and then some. That's good, right? Okay, fair, good enough. Uh, that gets a little bit complicated though when you add in technological innovation. So, in the case of Paris, for example, uh, one of the things my wife and I noticed when we went to some fast food restaurants in uh, Paris because we were desperate for some American food at some point. Uh, we noticed that uh, Paris has a lot more of the automated kiosks. Now, that has not been fully adopted yet in the United States. So why go for the automated kiosks in Europe? And I have a theory, and I suspect it's because um, Paris, or maybe France as a whole, probably has higher minimum wage requirements, or at least minimum benefit requirements, uh, than the United States does. And here's why that's important. If, uh, let's suppose that I'm going to be paying, you know, an employee a certain sum of money over the course of a year. Well, what happens then if an automated teller can do all that work for free, but I have to pay an upfront capital cost, right? The automated teller costs a lot of money up front, but then it doesn't need wages after that. I just have to keep it maintained. So over the very long term, perhaps it is actually more cost effective in order to get that automated teller. And when you do minimum price increases, and I'm not going to talk about the morality of uh, minimum wage, so don't get upset at me about that. I'm just talking economics right now. When you raise minimum wage laws or increase minimum benefits, then what you've done is you've changed the equation so that uh, the employer has to sit down and say, okay, at what point will getting an automated system actually be more cost effective than employing somebody? And the more expensive it is to hire somebody, the more likely that uh, automated machine is going to be cost effective and pay for itself a lot faster, right? As a result, whenever you, uh, whenever you do have minimum wage laws and you increase certain standards, what ends up happening is, one, the young people usually see their unemployment rise. Young people do not find jobs very easily. And that was something I noticed in Paris, by the way. A lot of young people who are unemployed uh, just going around and hanging out, and they're in their 20s. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, but uh, two, well, what was I trying, where was I going with this? Technological innovation just it changes up the equation. Now, that's sometimes a good thing. Sometimes uh, the extra cost of labor forces the market to create new technology it would not have otherwise, and that can be very useful from a technological perspective because it pushes the economy forward and modernizes a little bit more. So in an, to an extent, Europe, because they have uh, more automated machines, is going to be more technologically advanced or a more modernized economy than the United States would be. But the problem of that is you have higher unemployment, right? Now, what I'm doing with the automation tax is I'm actually reversing that. Uh, see, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tie it all together. I promise I was going to. 
What I'm doing is I'm tying it. I'm going to I'm going to basically raise the taxes on the uh, upfront capital to change the equation a little bit more the other direction. I'm making it more costly to get the upfront capital. Therefore, it is more likely that employers will want to hire people rather than turn to machines. Now, that's going to hurt my technology and we're going to pass this. So, yeah, technology will go down. Industrial automation goes down. But right now, when we have unemployment as bad as it is in Zambia, this actually is a good thing. In the long term, no, we probably don't want this. But for now, not bad. The downside, of course, is the technology. I'm sorry to say that that's the case, but we need people employed. So I'm willing to impose a tax and skew the market a little bit in that direction. I'm probably going to do about a 40% tax. I think that's probably pretty reasonable. But yeah. Uh, I, again, I'm not trying to get into the morality as far as minimum wage laws, but my thought is minimum wage, um, it's all well and good to say that we as a developed society need to have certain minimum standards. I mean, we're really wealthy, we're blessed. You know, we should have a minimum standard of living for everybody, right? And that sounds really good in theory. The problem is the minimum wage law is never $8 an hour, really. Minimum wage is actually zero. And that's a bit of an oxymoron because you're not actually getting paid because you're unemployed, you have no job. And I would argue, yes, minimum wage is really good for the people that keep their jobs and see their income go up. But for every person that keeps their job, you're probably seeing other people getting laid off. And now they have no income at all. That actually might be hard on the economy, not necessarily a good thing. When unemployment is bad, I don't know if you want to mess with the minimum wage law too much. And on top of that, some people just ask for way too much. I mean, good grief. In the United States, there's, uh, there's this push for a $15 minimum wage uh, and in the United States right now. Currently, it's like, uh, what is it, 70, 725 Something like that. So that's basically doubling the minimum wage. To which I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, if you double the minimum wage, then this automation tax, you have skewed the equation so much in the favor of the upfront capital cost. I guarantee you, if they do that, if that somehow gets passed through under, say, a Hillary Clinton presidency, uh, you're going to see those automated teller machines that, you, that I found in Europe. Those are going to start propping up all over the United States, especially in fast food restaurants, because low labor can easily be a com uh, sorry, low skilled labor can easily be counteracted or replaced by a machine. And you're going to have to do some sort of restrictions like an automated tax or a regulation in order to keep that in check. And it's just going to get worse and worse. Minimum wage is good in theory, but you need to keep people employed before you worry about that. My personal opinion. Let me know in the comments section if you agree with me, agree with me or disagree with me, because I'm sure you do. Uh, one of those things. Uh, maybe you're neutral. I, I don't know what I was trying to say. I'm trying to say one, some of you probably disagree with me and have some thoughts, but I didn't, didn't quite say that right. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm tired. Uh, what else do we want to do? I want to worry about a little bit more education. And one of the things that I like to do, especially in Democracy 3 Africa, is go for this foreign language curriculum. So what we're going to do now is uh, our schools are going to um, not teach all the classes in our native tongue, but they're actually going to start working in textbooks from other countries, let's say the UK or the USA, because English is more or less the international trade language right now. So by forcing our kids to become bilingual and learn English, we're actually going to make them uh, more adaptable to the modernized global market which is going to be very useful for us because, you know, we kind of need to compete globally in order to offer our services. Education goes up, international trade goes up, foreign investment goes up, tourism goes up, the youth are happy, capitalists like it. The only people who get really upset are the patriots because they don't like that we're not racially pure or something because we're speaking different languages and they don't like it. You know, we should, it's, 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 like, it's like in the United States. Stop speaking Spanish. This is America. You speak English here. It's kind of like that. But, you know, anyway, we're going to teach multiple foreign languages, so probably English, French, Mandarin, Chinese, maybe Japanese or German, something along those lines. You know, we'll give them, um, we'll give them a, a, wide, a wide variety of languages to pick from and uh, see how that works out. Anything else I want to do? I've only got four points left. Compulsory school sports is really good. It's very cheap, and it increases your health for practically nothing. It's just dirt cheap for a 4% increase. I like it. All right, we need to end this video here, though. I know that conveying certain economic principles uh, in only a few minutes is pretty difficult to do, so maybe I didn't explain it extremely well, and if so, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, again, I'm not getting into the morality of any of this. I know that there's a moral argument that people will make if, as far as minimum wage and so on. They'll say it's worth taking a... Uh, it's worth taking slower economic growth in order to make sure that everyone rises up equally. And that's a different conversation to have. I'm just talking the pure economics of it and then a little bit of my personal opinion. So uh, be respectful in the comment section and I will be happy to respond. Thank you all for watching. This has been Promise. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, then be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And I, as always, will see you guys next time.